So can you tell me just a bit about the history of the list? This is the fourth time that it's come out. Yes, it is. So it happens once every 10 years. And the first list was in 1983. So when I got the call to say I was on the grants list, I was at home um, and at my desk. And, you know, I got a call from John Freeman, who's the editor of Grant. And of course, you know, whatever anyone might say, all the writers knew that around this time, Granter was making its decision. So, you know, as soon as you hear John's voice, you sort of think it can only be for this reason. He's not going to call me to say you're not on the list. And yet, you know, until he quite gets to saying this is why I'm calling, um, you don't want to jump the gun and believe it. Um, but it was wonderful. You know, I grew up in, in Karachi and my mother used to uh, subscribe to Granter. So it would arrive from London you know, every few months. And sometimes it wouldn't arrive because the mail would go astray and that would be a, a terrible thing. Um, so, I, I, you know, I grew up on the other side of the world with, with Grant as this kind of lodestone. I think one, one of the hard things for a young writer, for any writer, to work out is how to bridge the gap between their own sense of their lives and the books that they have read. Because most people feel that their lives are pretty uneventful. And most people feel that the books they like are full of events. So how do we translate from the one to the other? And I try in my work to come as close as I can to the uneventfulness of my own life. So then I think about what are the things that, that shape me, little conversations that I remember, shifts in allegiance, moments that depress me, that set off a chain of reflection. That's the kind of thing I like to write about, and that's what I put in the book. I think reading a story aloud to, yeah, to a group of people is a fantastic kind of school. Um, I think that you can let yourself on the page allow yourself little kind of foliage of kind of description and and digressions or kind of little moments that you're incredibly proud of but where once you're reading it aloud you realize that you've suddenly lost everybody's interest and so the discipline of reading something aloud to people I really love actually that I've always liked doing readings to people um, because it's one of the best ways of actually kind of critiquing your own work and it's the best way of realizing what a strange performance writing is because it's this kind of silent kind of talking which so it sort of makes no sense it slightly becomes too overt when you're actually in a room with people and then at the same time just the silent page is not quite right either this year granta has partnered with audible uk to bring out the best young british novelist list for the first time in audio why now it's a special thrill for me because I'm a huge fan of audiobooks. I think it's because we were, we've been thinking a lot in the last couple of years about the different ways that people consume story, if I can put it that way, that we, we read on our iPads, we, you know, people read on Kindle, and people also listen to podcasts. And the growth of all of those different platforms really made us take a look at how far and wide we could get this collection of, of writers, a list that we're very proud of. And audio seemed an, a natural way to take, to take it forward. 